Let me put my bra on here, Pat. I <laughs> <laughs> tell Bruce too, man. It's very these crazy people. Back with my good buddy, Mark Thornton. Came over to his new place. He's got a new apartment on the beach. And I've got a new house uh, that I'm renting up in the mountains. So, kind of polar opposites as far as location. Yeah, yeah you love the beach. Yeah. And I love the mountains. I love the yeah. mountains too. I mean, I really like where we're living before. I mean, had to be, the problem is, like, there's a mountain. I knew I was never going to be able to climb to the top of it. I had a friend of mine did that the other day, climbed to the top of Mount Tunis. He's like in his early 30s, very fit, and he could barely walk the next day. Yeah. Because it's a really rigorous climb up there. Yeah. There's a lake up there. Do you know that? I had no clue. Yeah, there's a lake up there. I had no clue. You know, right from our backyard, we were living in Big Rock. There's a big lake up there. So you like your new place? Love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. What's the best part about where you live now? The ocean. Being able to get in the ocean. Because a, a lot of um, on Negros, especially the beaches, there's the beach there, but they're inaccessible because like volcanic rocks or, or boulders or whatever. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to get in the water and get out unless you've got like special shoes or something. And right here, you can really step into the, you got steps that go down into the ocean. And so you walk with nice grass in the ocean and go swimming. And I've been swimming two or three times a day. I go every day. I just love it. So I'm trying to, um, on this video, what I'd like to try to do is for the guys that are <clears throat> thinking about coming over here or definitely coming over here, mm -hmm. and maybe they don't have a place to go, do you have any suggestions for them as far as looking for a place? Would you advise an apartment? Would you say a house? Would you say furnished or unfurnished? Where would you? I would definitely say furnished and apartment. <clears throat> And I highly recommend Dulce Vita, where I live when I first, it was the second place I lived when I first came here. And the reason is, there's like 17 apartments there, almost all foreigners, you know, you know Americans, Germans, whatever. And they have a table out by the pool there. And everybody kind of sits out and has a coffee there. So when I moved in there, I made like five or six friends within two weeks. And they were saying, hey, you want to go to dinner? You want to go to a party? You want to go you know, into town tonight, whatever. And all of a sudden I had all these friends, plus since they'd been there for a long time, they would say, well, this is where you want to go if you want to buy some, some good meat or if you want to buy this or, you know, the movie theater, this is where it is, visas, all that stuff. Like, I had a wealth of knowledge, whereas um, if you live in a house, you're kind of isolated mm -hmm. and you may not even know your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so I just think, you know, and also furnish, you want to buy a bunch of stuff when you get here. So, you know, the place that I live, um, the last two apartments um, that I was in, they had dishes, cups, forks. I mean, everything was there. Cooking equipment. I mean, you didn't right. need anything. Even towels and sheets. Right. That's and a so, big rock. Yeah. So, so you'd advise Big Rock also? Well, yeah, Big Rock also. Yeah, you yeah. don't want. Yeah. So would I. And so that was, you know, and it was very nice. It's like Western, you know, you know, very nice and clean and nice and landscape, secure. Uh -huh. you know, so I would recommend that. Now, would you recommend that if someone comes out, and they, mine I think was kind of a unique case because I was given the place six months. When I say the place, I mean the Philippines. Right. I had never been here, I didn't know anybody, I didn't know one soul. And I told myself, well, I'll give it six months. If it passes the smell test, I'll stay. If it doesn't, I'll leave and figure something else out. And after six months is when I committed and that's when I bought the scooter. Mm. And I was thinking, you know, boy, I would do things differently had I had known what I had known. Of course, Hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? But um, I've, I've come to the conclusion that if I knew that I was going to be living here, um, I would probably start off just like you mentioned. I would start off in a place that was low-key as far as setup costs and all this, that, and the other. A place where you could acclimate and get to know people. where Because everywhere that you go is by word of mouth. Yeah. There is not a restaurant you can trust on the internet. There is not. A, there is nothing yeah. on Facebook yeah. that I have found that's trustworthy. Yeah. It's really worth of yeah, your friends are the best, and best it, advice. There's stuff posted that you say, "Oh, I'm going to go there and have a hamburger." Something simple. And the post is a year old, and the place is no longer exist. Yeah, different so, owners. Well, different owners, different, yeah. different thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so everything is word of mouth. But I also came to another conclusion when, when May and I made this move into this little house that was partially furnished. And here's the way I, I figured the math. 
was if I buy, or I'm sorry, if I rent a place for say 20,000 pesos, and I have the option to rent it furnished for 20,000, and I have the option to rent it for 15,000 unfurnished. I've seen those options in different, mm -hmm. in different locations. Knowing what I know now, I would rent it unfurnished. The reason being is I can buy Western style furniture for my fat ass, number one. I found that a lot of the furniture that comes with some apartments are not that comfortable. Um, I think for a few thousand dollars, you can get yourself a TV, a refrigerator, a couch, a mattress, yeah. some tables, etc. And I did the math in my head that 5000 a month is 100 bucks. So if I spent $1,000 getting um, furniture, or let's make it simple, if I spent $1,200 buying furniture, at the end of the year, I've made that money back. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, now, not only do I have the furniture I like, and I broke even on the rent versus what I paid for the furniture, but I also own the furniture. And so, I, I could walk away from it at that point and still be even Steven. But I think that a guy needs to be here for a period of time because you don't know if you're an ocean guy or if you're a mountain guy. At least I did. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Plus, it's another country, too. I mean, it's way, way different than America. I did it in 10 days. I literally was staying at the, um, what was it, the Pyramid House, which is basically a boarding house space. I had my own bathroom, and I shared a kitchen. And it was very basic, you know, fan, no air conditioning. Not even a big fan. A little one on the seal on the wall. But um, things just started turning around for me. And after 10 days, I decided I was going to stay. And that's when I went to Dulce Vida. And I lived there for almost a year. And uh, it just started turning around for me. I think you, you may not know if it's going to be the perfect place for you. But you'll definitely know within, I think, two weeks if you hate it. You yeah, may, yeah, come, you may come here and say, no, I don't like this at all. And, I can't stand the heat, I don't like the roads, I don't like this, I don't like that, and you want to get out of here. And, uh, but there's other guys who just come here and it's just all kind of, everything starts clicking, you know? Yeah. Which is what happened to me. How long do you feel it took for you to get acclimated? Where you felt like you were comfortable? Um, you, know, you know, you could walk out the door, you knew you wanted to buy a motorbike, you knew what kind you wanted. Um, you, you felt like you were comfortable driving from one place to another. And, just the knucklehead stuff that we take, you know, for granted. Yeah. That well, actually is an acclimation period. That's a really good question. Um, when I was living at the um, the boarding house, which is close to where you live now. Yeah, I know. Um, I know where the yeah, pyramid house. And I, um, the first week or two, I didn't have any transportation at all. I was riding around the back of a German guy's bike. He was actually kind enough to take me a few places. And then they had a Honda Scoopy that I could rent for a hundred dollars a month. This is a beat up. You know, Honda Scooby is way too small for me, a little 125. Right. But that kind of opened things up. At least I could get around. Right. And but I was, I didn't know where I was going. I had a bad sense of direction here. So mm -hmm. for like, even though I moved out and I went to Dulce Vida, whenever I would go to the mall, my friend Trevor, who'd been there for a couple of years, I had to get him to meet me someplace. I'd follow him to the yeah. mall. I yeah. did that to you, remember? Yeah. When I had that little Honda Scooby, Paul said, hey, you want to go to... Why not? So, yeah, sure, I'll meet you at some place and follow Paul wherever he went. You're going too fast, don't lose me, because this thing had, like, no shocks on it. No, I had a Scooby when I first got here. Did you? Yeah, I really was. But my, yeah. knees, my knees hit the handlebars when I turned the corner, so it was like a mini bike. And, uh, but then I got used to going around, you know, and I started getting more and more comfortable, and after a while I could go to the mall by myself. And But if I went into town at night, I would get lost sometimes in Dumaguete. Yep. And because there's, there's no street signs, there's no... no. You know, it's a real hard, and then you have a street that's one way in the daytime and two way at night. The nighttime, yeah. And uh, I get lost sometimes, especially if you've been out, you know, at Why Not or something, had just a couple of drinks. Right. And I'd get lost finding my way back home. But now it's like I'm really comfortable, and I bought my own motorcycle, and, you know, once I got that, I started riding around more. Now, you know, I just kind of take off, and I can always, it's an island. How, how lost can you get, you know? Yeah, but true. Um, I don't know, I'd say it took me to get totally comfortable six weeks. Six weeks. You know. Okay. Yeah. I think it took me a year. Yeah. But that's just that's just our learning curve, I guess. Yeah, I guess we included yeah. everything. But I was lucky I had you as a friend. And so, you know, we did a lot of things together. And we'd always meet 
That's true. You know. Yeah, I guess that is kind of a, 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 a true statement. He, I kind of look. Well, I've been here over a year. Yeah. You know, when you showed up, you're like my mentor. You still are my mentor. Oh shoot, please. Yeah. Yeah. Like my YouTube channel. All the reason I got a YouTube channel because of him. <laughs> But, but you know, I just like to put it out there that I think sometimes we make this place all glittery with the girls and the beach yeah. and the scenery and all that kind of stuff, and it is. But there is that 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 acclimation period yeah. that guys will go through, and I think the learning curve is different for everyone. Yeah. Um, and again, I came out here stone cold alone. I didn't know a soul. Me too. I didn't know a single person. Um, not one. Ooh. And so everything I did, I paid too much for. I used public transportation. The jeepney drivers, the trike drivers would just say, up to you. And I asked them how much, yeah. and I'd overpay them. And I rented a bike, I think, after two months. And that was a game changer yeah. because it gave me that independence. Yeah. And then on my six-month anniversary, I bought a bike. And then that was really cool. And then... Um, just the apartment hunting and shopping and all that kind of stuff. Now, I had a guy recently ask me on a live stream. He says, I've got $100,000 and I'm 58 years old and I'll turn 62 in four years and then I'll collect my social security. Do you think it's safe for me to move there? And I was candid with him and I said, no. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, and I know, I know you feel differently because you came out here with very Six hundred dollars and everything. Six hundred dollars in max out credit cards. Okay, but and that's a great story. But I am just a. I don't know. You're uh, a finance guy, first of all. Well, it's not just that. It was it was the fact that um, I'm, I'm also a paranoid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that if, if you come out here with a finite amount of money, it's just that it's finite. I'm a lot more comfortable with an income flow. Oh yeah, an income stream. Yeah. You know, because I income. know that whether it's a thousand dollars, two thousand, three thousand, or anything in between, if I've got that coming every month for sure, then I'm never going to be homeless or hungry. Right. How if I come here with a hundred thousand dollars? Doesn't mean I have it in my hand. It could be at the bank that I could transfer over. Um, that means you got to live on two thousand a month, which is plenty. You got your setup fees. But there's just that emergency funds, and I've watched guys fail. Um, I've watched guys burn through it. The next they thing burn through it. They need to buy a house. They're or... buying a house. They they have habits they didn't know they had. Yeah. Uh, they're developing some new ones. There's a lot of temptation out here that mm -hmm. that, that guys maybe think they don't have, but they get here and they acquire it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't a fan of that number. Um, I said two hundred thousand. I would feel comfortable because that's kind of like. Impossible to go there. I've never had a hundred thousand, so I know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel completely different. And you came oh, yeah. over here with six hundred bucks and six hundred dollars. Yep, yeah, that's it. And you're here fine. I'm here you're fine. I paid off almost all those credit cards, and I'm making good money now. And I've even got investments. The yeah. Yeah, they may be small. Yeah. Living in a great place. I got a motorcycle that's paid for. And I don't. I don't worry about money at all. Here. I don't even think okay. about it. If we go to the store, we want to buy something. We buy any other big things, but I mean. We don't like have a budget, you know, mm -hmm. at all. You know, we just kind of, you know, we, whatever we need, we get it, you know. Because the two biggest questions that I think guys have, or at least I knew I had the same ones, but the ones that I get asked the most are about relationships and about money. Yeah. And those are the two. So I just thought we would kind of briefly go over it after since I've been here. How long have you been here? Um, I came here, it will have been two years in July, first week in July, so, so almost two years. Okay, so next month, you're July. Yeah. I just turned four years. And no way does that make either one of us an expert. No, far, 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 far yeah. from it. We're still yeah. novices. At but where my life was, in the lifestyle I was living when I first came here, I was staying in that bed and breakfast or that um, Airbnb, Airbnb, yeah. Airbnb, and to where I am now, it's like light years. Right. It's like my life's gotten so much better. So does every day it gets better here, every day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, I could never have dreamed how good it would be for me. Right. I mean, relationship, you know, money, everything. Everything, health, all that. So I think that, that if the guys are watching, maybe the point I'm trying to get across is that if, they, if they're committed to coming over here, um, we could do a 
three hour video about what you should bring and buy, like buying boxes and all that. Yeah, I could have used that advice a lot. You know, that would be really useful, yeah. So if a guy is committed to coming over here, unlike me, where I was given it six months, but you know you're gonna come for sure, my friendly suggestion would be that you pack about a buying box a couple months before mm -hmm. and you fill it up with clothes and uh, mm -hmm. You know, vitamins and medications. Right. And don't and ship it. Like, what you want to do is find where you can live first and have it sent. But have it sent. That's an idea for a business. Like, what if you had just a receipt and had an address that accepted these buy in boxes for people that were going to come here and you stored it until they. Well, doesn't they moved the OBC into just store it in its place until you I have no idea. Yeah, I've never dealt with it. I found out these from you. Yeah. If I paid, give you an idea. I paid, my mother paid $500 to send me a little box like this big. When I first came here, it weighed about 10 pounds. And the boxes that Paul's, that Paul's talking about are huge. And you can put as much weight in, you can put 1,000 pounds in there, I guess. And it's like anywhere between 60 and what, $100, something like that? Yeah. I mean, it's a great deal. It's a great deal for sending stuff over. I think it may take two months to get here, but my little box took two months too. So you might want to be here in four days. In my mind, you might want to book a hotel room and then just have the thing shipped to the hotel. Uh, that might be a solution. I don't know. I'll have to look into yeah. that. Um, I just had a guy send me 11 boxes uh, over a year ago. I've been storing them and now he's just donating them to us. So that's another video. But um, you, you know. yeah, we'll see. Um, so I guess if guys are coming over here, I call it a year to get acclimated. And then I think the, 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 the sage advice, and I don't like to give advice, but these are just kind of suggestions yeah. and stuff that we've been through ourselves, is initially, if you're new out here, but you know you're gonna stay, rent someplace where there's other foreigners, yeah. sort of a compound for safety, advice, information, um, get a place that's furnished, yeah. and then yeah. hunt down and spend your time driving around the island and seeing do you like it at the beach or do you prefer it in the legend. We've got friends that want to live down by Dumaguete yeah. because that's the last place I would want to live, no, but I'm not them. And that's their bliss. So they the want city to be people, right yeah. there. You know, walk they down to go they want to walk down and be able to go get a yeah. coffee at a McDonald's and that's just their deal. Like in Cebu, a lot of people like to live near the mall. They've got a really great yeah. mall there and there's a lot of stuff to do in Cebu. Within walking, this you don't even need a car or a yeah, bus so, or a motorbike. Yeah. So, but you know, here it's different. Yeah. So I'm always thinking about the guys that tell me that they're coming out here and ask me all these questions like how to transfer money and what do I need to bring and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, it would be a two-hour video, but it would be what I would do differently. Yeah. So I think, as a general thing, I would a I would discourage you trying to come out here with just a finite amount of money unless it was really a lot. Um, I like an income stream. You don't bring your money sort. with you. Leave it in America. Just draw it out of the ATM. Just draw it out. Yeah. If, yep. you have, if you get Charles Schwab, having a Charles Schwab account, it's free ATM. You don't get your ATM fees back. So it's just like having a bank in America. You know. So I would do that. Yeah. Charles Schwab is the one thing that I regret the most, I, I think, about before coming out here. You can open one online. I opened mine when I was here. I thought you said it was closed. No. I opened mine when I was here. Oh, but you got a thing mailed to your wife or your mom or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the yeah. credit. Yeah, the card went to my mom and then she sent it to me. I don't have that much. Oh, right. Yeah. So that would be another thing you might want to set up. Is yeah. A mail forwarding service. You know about that? You I don't get any mail. I don't get any mail. I don't. I don't but want what any about mail. the Charles Schwab? But they're going to mail it to America. Yeah, it's one credit card. Like you could probably call customer service up and have them FedEx it to you. You say I'm traveling to the Philippines right now and. And you fed exit to me, I think they would do that, charge you for it, but that might be the best thing you have it in a couple of days. All right. They're really, they're really, the customer service is great. I mean, they, they were very nice to me. I talked to them a couple of times about some things. I was, I have a Robinhood account, and I transferred money from a Charles Schwab to my Robinhood, and it was taking too long, and I called up, and it wasn't Charles Schwab, it was Robinhood that, you know, they hold the money for a while before they actually put it in your account. Okay. So I think that uh, a Charles Schwab account, as far as banking and checking go, mm -hmm. is sage advice because the ATM is for free. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys need to research that on your own. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you they've got different programs and different well, strokes for different. Buy yourself a really good, you know, mobile phone 
If you use a laptop, buy yourself a really good laptop, you know, in your home country. Make sure you buy a phone that's not with a, like AT&T or T-Mobile that it's completely unlocked when you buy it. So you can put your SIM cards in here because you pay too much for phones here. There's not a good selection. Like you had to order yours online. Yep. And same with my, my computer, I think your computer, yep. we had to order online from Amazon. We had to pay a bunch of shipping and, and taxes and fees and stuff. So if you, if you use a computer, everybody uses a cell phone now. Get a really good one and buy it there at home and bring it with you. That's my yeah. advice to those. Yeah, if I if I had it to do all over again, let's forget the ballot my inbox. Mm -hmm. But in my lap in my backpack I would have my computer and I would also have a backup computer in my luggage. A good idea. Um, in the box. Just because this one's gonna fry at some point in time. Mm -hmm. So I would take Mark's suggestion of uh, Top of the line, nice computer. Well, if you have an old one, here, it's bring, it's buy a new one and bring your old one with you. That's what I did. Either okay. combination. Yeah. But duplication, I think, is good. Yeah. A couple of phones is yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Um, a lot of shorts if you're a big guy because they're hard to find. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, uh, I'm a 34 waist and I cannot find shorts here, even at the mall. Right. I'm a 36 waist. Yes. And I, I can't find yeah. them. So you know, buy really good, you know, comfortable cargo shorts. We weren't a lot of shorts here and buy them, you know, in, in the States, and or where, what country, country you're coming from, and bring those with you. Same thing with shoes. You know, bring a couple good pair of shoes that you like. Shirts, easy to get here. Loads of shirts. True. That's easy to find. True. You know, um, sunscreen. If you're fair skinned and you get burned easy, buy yourself a bunch of sunscreen and bring it with you in your suitcase. It's not only expensive here, it's hard to find. I went into three pharmacies. My girlfriend and I took a road trip a couple weeks ago. And we went to three pharmacies, not one of them sold sunscreen of any kind. So if you need sunscreen, buy it there and bring it with you. Simple knucklehead stuff like Tylenol, ibuprofen, oh, aspirin. Uh, aspirin. You can uh, baby find, aspirin yeah. if you've got a heart thing and you're taking the baby aspirin. So that you can um, find here. Can you? Yeah, they, but it's all in bubble wrap. Or not but bubble it's wrap. Expensive. Blister, blister packs. It's expensive. Yeah, it's real expensive. And like, you know, go to, if you take aspirin, go to Walmart, those great big, the biggest bottle you can find of aspirin, bring like three or four of those with you. Yeah. Because you cannot buy a bottle of aspirin anywhere in the Philippines. Good and reasons. The only aspirin, yeah. And the only aspirin I can get is these little tiny baby aspirin. They taste like candy. And so you, your back hurts, you got to take like 50 of them to get the candy <laughs> over, you know? uh, Then a guy went shopping for me. And I asked him to buy me some razor blades, some decent razor blades. Because uh, again, the price is triple out here for the, the, the nice, you know, Gillette type yeah. of, of razors. Um, socks, underwear, shoes, shorts, um, just all the other things that we mentioned. And medications, if you're on any yeah. kind of medication that might be edgy, in other words, like a pain medication, there's a, probably a pretty good chance you're not going to get it out here. Yeah, you unless you go see a doctor. If it's, got, if it's an opioid like Ambien, you have to have a prescription from a doctor uh, to get it here. And, and there may not be a pharmacy that, told, that holds it. That's so, right. Um, you may have the prescription, but you may not be able to get the drug. Yeah. So, again. The good thing is, like, I take lisinopril, which is a very common blood pressure medicine, and I can get it without a prescription in any pharmacy. If they've got it, they'll sell it to you. And that's true with quite a few medications that are not um, opioid. You can get it without a prescription. But I've also been out looking like, I'll go to like four pharmacies and nobody sells with lisinopril, they're all sold out. And so um, if you do buy it here or you bring it with you, make sure you've always got like a month backup. Yeah. Like start going and buying some more, whatever your medication is, go shopping for it. You know, if you're here like a month before you run out, don't wait till you're down to, to two pills and then start looking for it because it's quite common to be out of things. That's right. You know, out of stock are the three favorite words yeah, you hear a lot of story here. So what Mark's saying is very true. If you're on a certain medication that you can refill, make sure you've got at least a month on you when you do refill mm -hmm. because it may not be there and you don't want to get down to the last day, especially if you've got a certain condition. As, as you get older, the conditions just keep coming. <laughs> All right, kids. Well, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to come over here and visit Mark at his new beach bungalow with beautiful Jen. And congratulations to them. They're going to be getting married, but I'll leave that for them to do on their own video. So thanks for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. Thanks for coming over. All right. We'll see you crazy people later.